Today on Pro's Park Pass, I'm going to show you some absurd details about Disney and Disney California Adventure that you did not know. No way you know these ones. Maybe you know a few of them, but not all of them. These are some absurd details in the parks. Let's do this. The one thing they do here at Disney that's so special is the attention to detail. They put so much detail on almost everything. Little things of hidden magic everywhere you go. So I'm going to show you some absurd details that you might not have been aware of. Except for this first one I'm gonna show you. This is one of the very first things I ever did. I did it this video uh, maybe like four years ago when I talked about this like four years ago. But we have a lot of new people subscribed since then. I think we had like a 800 people when I did this video. So I thought I'd redo this cool detail um, as we have a bunch of new people here who've joined the channel. Right here off of Main Street, you can see this little street right over here. This is where Miles and I like to go get a pickle. And you guys got look at the windows there. Bob Skur windows up there and they also these windows you can hear like this dental school you can hear like little sounds up there but that's not what I am here to show you I'm here to show you this drinking fountain now this is one of the very first facts that I ever did here on Provost Park Pass this is called the test wall and what it is is when they were first coming up with the idea they wanted Disneyland to be like kind of cartoony right and so they thought it'd be a idea, great idea to have wavy bricks see how these bricks are all wavy like this but they weren't sure how it was going to look. So what they did is they did this test wall where they put the wavy bricks there, then they had to go up right next to the straight bricks to get an idea of which one did they like better. They ended up choosing the straight bricks, but they left this test wall here because they didn't have enough money to go ahead and change that. They just slapped a drinking fountain right there in the center of it and just called it good. But this is, you see the original vision here, the test wall, all the wavy bricks. Now I know I've talked about this one before, but I just want to show it again. Okay, now the next ones I'm gonna get into are way, way deeper cuts. You probably don't know these ones. Let's do it. Okay, so for this absurd detail, we have to go into Fantasyland right up to the Storybook Canal. You guys, the Matterhorn is so iconic. I love the look of it. I love the way that it sounds. I love the wind that's blowing off of it. Just, I love it. I love it, 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 I love it. Something interesting, this is just for fun, not an absurd fact, but you know, over the years they painted it and painted it, it got wider and wider and wider. And if you look at old photos of the Matterhorn, you'll see at one point it's basically almost all white. Yeah, it just kind of kept repainting it. When they rethemed it, they went and removed all the old paint so those rocks were uh, showing. You'll notice there's more snow on the north side than there is on the south side, just like in real life. That's not the absurd detail I'm here to show you. I'm just kind of yammering on. Let's get down here to Storybook Land. Okay, here we are at Storybook Land. And you can see Monster right out there, a giant well that swallows you up when you go on the ride. Did you know back in the day, they actually spurt, the Monster was squirt water. Yeah, for real, he would squirt water up there. Doesn't do that anymore, but uh, he did. He actually would blow water up there. Pfft, you know how wells do. But that's still not the absurd fact that I want to share with you. When you write Storybook Land, you're going to see all of these little miniature houses from different characters. Here is an absurd fact you probably didn't know. Every one of those houses has like a little door, right? The door, those doors open, they're on little hinges, they open and close. That way the cast members could open and close the doors and reach in and change light bulbs. Yes, every one of the doors here on Storybook Land, they open and close. I wish I could see that. I wish I, I have never been able to see that from person, but I have cast members who work here and tell me that they'll go through maintenance on that. How cool is that? Opening and closing doors on the little houses. Okay, so for this next absurd detail that you didn't know, we gotta go to the, the Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion. And we need to talk about Constance Hatchaway. You know, the bride that cuts off all of her husband's heads. Yeah. I mean, at what point do you think the, like the fourth husband was like, oh, you had three other husbands? How they die? Decapitated. Don't you think at some point it would've been like, I must ask you a question. When do you get nervous and suspicious? I don't really know. Anyways, Constance Hatchaway. Oh, by the way, we've talked a whole bunch about her. Do you know that Provost Park Pass has a podcast? We do, and we we didn't know it at the time. We've been doing a podcast, and then we stopped doing it because we just got so busy. Then we got reached out by like Apple and other things. We found out that our podcast was the point point two five percent highest in the world like in the top 1%. And we found out we were rated number one in Canada. We were rated in the top 150 in Mexico and the top 75 in the United States. We have restarted our podcast. You go, it's just Provost Park Pass um, podcast. And that's something my wife Amanda does. Every topic we ever do, that's all because of Amanda. So you guys can go ahead and listen to those podcasts. Because we did talk a little bit about Constance 
on our podcast. Right here in the front of Haunted Mansion, you're gonna go inside and see one of the most famous characters, of course, is Constance Hatchaway. She's the bride that kills all of her husbands. But did you know she wasn't designed to be a villain? No, she was designed to be a victim. That's right, when they first came up with the idea, the concept art for Constance, she was the one that was going to be decapitated. And you can see the proof of concept of that in the uh, great moments of Mr. Lincoln. There's a photo there that Mark Davis did showing Constance with her head. By the way, I don't know if you guys also know this. Did you know that when you get in that stretchy room, that is a giant elevator that takes you down so you can walk below the railroad tracks. It's an elevator. One thing you'll never, ever, ever, ever see in the elevator are ghosts on going up because they don't want their spirits uplifted. Oh, you guys, it is a hot, hot, hot day. And so I want to go over to DCA and show you some more absurd facts over DCA. But before we do that, I'm going to get a mint jewel up here in New Orleans Square because it's just... Whew. It's a little bit warm. By the way, I did make a whole video about uh, how to go to Disneyland if you're uh, hot, if you're here during the summer, it's really hot. You watch a video here or here. Maybe it's right here in the middle, I'm not exactly sure. I give you tips on how to skip the heat at Disneyland. All right, let's get a mint julep. I did not get my normal mint julep. I got the passion fruit mint julep. With, you see there's a little, uh, little sprig of mint and some lemon in there. It's perfect for a summer hot day like today. Mm. Let's be classy, guys. Thank you. cold feels really good so people often ask me they're like Chris what is your favorite thing about Disney and I love everything about it but you know what really is the best part about going to Disney it's being here with your family or your friends kind of screwing around eating maybe a meal maybe a little overpriced and, uh, joking teasing having fun and just enjoying the day with everybody that is the very best part of being at Disneyland with, like without fell like it's so much fun. So, I mean, just being here with your family and friends. Rides is a bonus. Food is a bonus. It's spending quality time with your loved ones. All right, I'm gonna drink this. I'm done drinking this. We're gonna go over to Disney California Adventure, and I'm gonna show you some cool, absurd things there that you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, peaky out, sorry. Okay, finished it. Do you guys get brain freeze? I get brain freeze really easy. I almost, I almost started getting one like this. I have to go, I have to drink cold drinks very slowly. But anyways, okay, let's go over to DCA. Before we get over to DCA, I just wanted to take this moment to do a quick little message to parents. To parents. I'm talking to grandparents, to parents, and to aunts and uncles because you're all parents. Um, particularly, I want to talk to single parents right now. Single mom or single dad. Sometimes you might wonder, like, you're, I know that it's difficult and you're trying your best and you're wondering, oh, am I doing a good enough job? I need you to know that you are. You are, absolutely. You're doing an amazing job. For all you parents out there, we all get overwhelmed, and that's normal, and uh, that that's happens. That's nothing abnormal, doesn't make you a bad parent. Just remember to tell your kids that you love them a lot, and know that you are enough, and that your kids are lucky to have you as a parent. Okay, let's, uh, let's walk down to, we're right by Coca-Cola Corner. I'll show you the one thing everybody knows, and then we'll walk to DCA. This is another little absurd detail. I think everybody knows this one. This is one of the very first things I did almost four years ago at a cast member show. It's a Coca-Cola light bulb. Now, Walt likes things to be even. If you go right here to the corner, you see that that light bulb is half and half because uh, he didn't want two white bulbs or two red bulbs together, so he painted one in half, and now they have a special bulb put there. It's a Coca-Cola light bulb. All right, I just exit out of Disneyland, and I'm going to Disney California Adventure. I just noticed that I, I, I think I said DCA. You know, back in, the, back in the day when I worked in the professional world, I had my team of employees who worked under me, and I forbid them from ever using acronyms because people, you know, acronyms is when this is the letters of something like DCA, stands for Disney California Adventure. Because sometimes people don't know what the acronym is, but they get embarrassed to ask. And so I just said, hey, I'm going to go to DCA. And I thought, there might be people who don't know what that is. That is Disney California Adventure. There is Disneyland right there. And right over here is Disney California Adventure, sometimes known as DCA. They're like, it's like, you can just, you can walk back and forth, back and forth, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's so easy to walk back and forth between them. And you can park hop. It's not like uh, Florida where you got to make a little bit of a plan to do it. Here you just park up. DCA. Now, if you're thinking about coming down to Disney, let me tell you the best way to do this. You can get tickets from Getaway Today. Um, I'll put the link down below. If you click that link, you are gonna get the very best price. The very best price. We have the very best prices with Getaway Today. So make sure you click that link or you can call 1-855-GETAWAY and tell them Provost Park Pass sent you. And you will also get the very best prices. They'll help you with your whole plan down here. The whole vacation. 
getting your hotel, your tickets, everything you need. When you come down here, you can get what's called a park hopper, which allows you to go to two parks in one day. After one o'clock, you go to either park, which is awesome. Um, or you can just get a park, if you want to save a little bit of money, you get a park per day, where they usually stay at Disneyland all day, and the next day you come to Disney California Adventure, you get tickets for each of those parks. Now, if you're not concerned about park hopping, then I suggest getting a park per day, because it's a little bit cheaper. Again, uh, I'll put a link down below. They'll help you get the best vacation deal you can. They'll help you book your hotel and also all your tickets because they're not selling Magic Keys anymore right now. So if you want to come down, you don't have a Magic Key, you're going to have to buy tickets. And they'll help you like even make your reservations and all that stuff. They're awesome. So click the link down below. All right, let's go look at some absurd details here in Disney California Adventure. All right, guys, I love you. These guys are so talented. It's the Philly Phonics. And they are so good. So here we are in Disney California Adventure. Right over there is Paradise Pier. You got the Mickey's Fun Wheel, or sounds called the Pixar Pal Around. And we are gonna go right over there. Isn't that a beautiful view? This is a very Instagrammable photo spot for you Instagrammers out there. You've got the Pixar Pal Around, and of course you've got the Criticals. You know when the Criticals first opened up, there was a tube on the top of there, and then you can see what the loop is. There's a, there's a little plate behind it. There was no tube over there or on the other one. That was added when they we, when they changed it to the credit coaster before it was a California Screamer. But the reason that whole, they had that whole tube there and that plate behind the loop was sound abatement. That way if you were yelling or screaming, it didn't carry over into like the back behind the park. But then, so wisely, they added those tunnels on a bunch of loops when they turned it into the credit coaster. That's not the absurd detail that I'm about to show you though. It's just something kind of fun. I kind of, you guys, are for those who are new to the channel, I do tend to meander. By the way, hit the subscribe button. Wait a minute. Did you hit that like button yet? Okay, just checking. This is the launch pad right here for the Incredicoaster. And right over there is, see right there? That is a balcony where that little uh, life loader is for the secret room at Lampire's Lounge. We have a whole video about that secret room. And here they go, guys. If you want to learn more about the secret room, you can click over there on somewhere around here and learn about that secret room and how you get in there. This next absurd detail is for the Incredicoaster. Now, if you've ridden the Incredicoaster twice, you probably are aware of it. If you've only ridden the Incredicoaster once, you probably aren't aware of it. What? See that big drop right there where they drop down? Well, right, right in there, inside that tube, is Mr. Incredible, and he has a cookie. He's like, Jack, Jack, num, num, Jack, num, num. And as you're going up the hill, right as you crest over the hill, you'll see Mr. Incredible with that cookie. If you breathe in, you can smell cookie. That whole tube is smelled like cookies. But usually, people who are riding it for the first time, they're not breathing in, they're just screaming, ah, ah. So they miss the cookie smell. People have ridden it the second time, then they're always like, Smell like cookies. So, absurd right there. You can smell cookies on the credit coaster. Let's go on a credit coaster so I sh can show you that cookie smell. Ah! Okay, at the top of this hill is where you smell the cookie. Right at the right top. Right here, smell it. Okay, so for this next absurd detail, we have to go into Cars Land. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cargo. Cargo who? Cargo beep, beep. All right, so now we gotta go into Cars Land, which I think is one of the prettiest lands in all of Disney. 
everywhere. It's so awesome. This Flo's VA Cafe. Then we got Ramon's House of Body Art. What does Ramon do? He paints. He's a painter. And if you come right inside his, his shop, which I love, as you gotta look down at the ground. Right back here they have art. And what do you see down the ground? Speckled paint. Because Ramon's a painter. Can you believe that? Speckled paint all throughout Ramon, just in this area, this little shop that's even sponsored on the wall down there. It's down here. Now, I always thought there'd be a hidden Mickey down in the splash speck of paint, but I've never seen one, so. But there are some hidden Mickeys here in Ramones. I'll show you where those are. In the front of the store, there's some hoods uh, on, the, on the store here, and there's a little hidden Mickey on each one of those hoods. All right, so here's a hood right here, and as you can see right here, there is a very faint hidden Mickey. See it right there? It is very, very faint. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. And every one of the hoods has them like this. You can spend a whole afternoon trying to find them all. That's an absurd detail. Now this next thing's not an absurd detail, but since we're here in Cars Land, I just want to show it because I like it. When you walk to the end of the street, you're gonna see the town of Radiator Springs. This is, and you see right over here, this nice little wooden telephone pole. But what you want to look up is in the telephone pole, you see a wire, and what do you see? A hidden Mickey. That's awesome, huh? All right, so for this next absurd detail, we gotta come to Luigi's Rollickin Roadsters. Rollickin, Rollickin, Rollickin. Sounds weird, we say it enough. Rollickin, Rollickin, Rollickin Roadsters. But it's inside where you see these absurd details. See this amazing wall? There's a lot, there's really cool things to look on, look at. So sometimes the line just goes right by, but if the line ever lets you go past here, take your time and look at all these amazing things here. It is really cool. There's some really absurd details. All right, so right here, you can see against the wall here, they have a Lightning McQueen. They look very carefully. What is he wearing? Mickey ears. <laughs> How cute is that? You can't even handle that, right? Way to go, Lightning McQueen. Now, who is one of the most influential people for Pixar? John Lasseter. Look here, they have a little nod to him. If you look here in the wall and you look up, you see two Luigi, two Luigi and Guido. Thanks for the new white walls. John Lasseter. Tire. It's a play off of his name, and that car kind of looks like it resembles him. How cool is that? A little nod to John Lasseter. John Lasseter. Tire. That's an absurd detail. These videos are enjoyable for me to do. I hope you guys enjoy them as well. Uh, it's just kind of funny. I, I know sometimes I kind of blather on because I don't have my usual script. Normally when I'm doing like a secret reveal, we've got it all down, bam, 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 bam. But here I'm just kind of going through and showing you some absurd facts that I know of that I think are really cool. If there's some cool fact or hidden fact or absurd fact that I did not show that you think I should, put it down in the comment down below. And then when I collect enough of those, I'll make it another video like this, showcasing those absurd facts, cool facts, hidden facts, whatever you want to call them. And so put them down in the comments down below. Uh, that's literally how I find most of these is through cast members or hardcore Disney fans. They're the ones that let us know all about that. So thank you so much. So put it down in the comments down below. That's how I find all this stuff. All right. Everybody here knows about this Griffith Park bench. I've talked about this before. This is where Walt Disney was sitting when he came up with the idea for Disney. But do you know about the memo that this bench inspired? So, Walt Disney came up with the idea when he was sitting there on that bench for Walt Disney and the kind of idea was percolating and germinating through his mind, coming up with it. But the very first recorded instance of the idea of Disneyland was in a memo written on August 31st, 1948. Walt drafted this memo to Dick Kelsey. Now, do Dick Kelsey was the studio manager of Walt Disney Studios. In this memo, Walt outlined his idea of what he wanted Disneyland to be like. Now, what did he say? He wanted what he called Western, like a Western area, Western Village, which of course that turned into Frontierland. And he talked about being able to go down to walking down past shops, Main Street. He talked about uh, places for people to sit. That way they could just sit there and relax. It, didn't, it wasn't like a hustle, hustle, hustle. And they wanted it to be clean. This was the first time Disneyland was ever mentioned on paper. It was on August 31st, 1948, a memo that Walt wrote. Yeah, how amazing is that? And that whole idea got started on that bench. Woo! Now, if you guys like these videos, here's what I'd like you to do. 
would you go ahead and hit the little subscribe button? Because when I see the subscribe button, the, like I look at the videos, I'm like, oh, people subscribe to these videos. Then I know you like that type of material and you like that content, so you want more of it. So please hit that subscribe button. Also, if you hit the notification bell, then you'll be notified when new content comes out. Then, if you do like this video and you learn something new, then go ahead and hit that little like button. That goes, oh, that just, hit that like button, guys. It just lets me know that you learned something new on this video. Yeah. So if you did learn something new or this video made you smile, hit the like button. And let me leave you with this little nugget. I just want you guys to know that I appreciate you. You're awesome. No matter what you're going through, what's going on in your life right now, no matter anything that's going on, job, work, uh, relationship, health, uh, school, just boredom, whatever it is that you're going through right now, I think you're amazing and just keep at it. You're awesome, you're awesome. All right guys, here we go. Let's end the video. Talk to you later, bye-bye.